In a small port in Svenborg, Denmark, in 1904, a young man named Arnold Peter Müller gazed at the ocean with sparkling eyes. His dream of building a strong and trusted shipping company had taken deep root in his mind. With burning determination, he and his father, Captain Peter Mersk Müller, founded a shipping company called Dumpskipsel Skabel Svenborg, which later became known as AP Müller Mersk. The beginning of the journey was not easy. Arnold and his father had to struggle against fierce competition and uncertainty in the shipping industry. However, with perseverance and a strong vision, they managed to develop their fleet of ships. Years passed and Maersk grew into a respected shipping company in Denmark. When World War I broke out in 1914, Maersk faced unprecedented challenges. The seas that were once trade routes turned into battlefields. Maersk's ships had to navigate treacherous waters, facing the threat of torpedoes and sea mines. However, amidst the chaos of war, Maersk saw an opportunity. They took over trade routes abandoned by other companies and served countries in need during difficult times. After the war, Maersk continued to grow rapidly. They expanded their shipping network worldwide, connecting continents with sturdy ships. Innovation after innovation was made to improve efficiency and service quality. Then in 1919, the still new shipping company built its own shipyard and nine years later, the company had six fleet ships. These ships crossed trans-Pacific routes under the name Maersk Line. In 1930, Maersk diversified, adding armaments to its shipping business and building a fleet of tankers and motor ships. The outbreak of World War II at that time forced Maersk to work hard to build 46 ships and establish its armaments factory called Reifel Schundikete. This made Maersk the second largest shipping company in Denmark. On April 8, 1940, AP Müller issued a regulation known as Permanent Special Instruction 1 to all Maersk ships, instructing them to report directly to the company's office in New York if Denmark entered the war. The following day, Denmark was invaded by Germany, and the office in the United States took over the fleet. Unfortunately, the maintenance of the fleet did not last long. A year later, the United States Navy requested all foreign-owned ships for the remainder of the war, causing Maersk Line to lose most of its fleet in battle. In 1944, Reifel Schundikete was sabotaged by the Danish resistance. This sabotage forced all arms production at the factory to stop. After the war, Maersk faced another problem. The company was fined 10 million Danish kroner at the time for dealing with Germany during the occupation. As a result, its shipping line was reduced to only seven ships. Despite suffering heavy losses, within just eight years, Maersk rebuilt its fleet to the same level as before the outbreak of hostilities. The shipping company even opened a new, larger shipyard, Odenseli New Yard, and shifted its focus to building much larger ships. As a sign of the company's resurgence, for the first time, Maersk introduced a light blue color to its logo. At that time, the company also built a ship named Regina Maersk, which became the first ship to have its hull painted light blue. This new color was well received, and within a short time, the entire company fleet was painted light blue. Moreover, the company also succeeded in marking one of the latest milestones in 1956, when Maersk introduced a revolutionary container system. 
This system changed the face of the shipping industry forever, enabling faster, safer, and more efficient transportation of goods. Not content with just being a shipping company, Maersk began diversifying its business. They formed Maersk Oil in 1962, stepping into the oil and gas industry. This decision proved to be the right move as Maersk Oil became one of the major players in the global energy industry. In the same year, the company also obtained permission to explore for oil in the North Sea, and a division called Maersk Air was launched. However, in 1965, Maersk McKinney Mula began taking over the company after his father's death. Two years later, Maersk Supply Service was established and operated with strong support from the company. Additionally, in 1968, Maersk opened a route between Europe and Asia, optimizing new ships with higher capacity. As a result, these ships could start traveling to the Far East safely and effectively. In the following years, Maersk began building nine container ships to operate on the United States and Asia routes. Transporting goods to other countries increased the need to utilize the entire container space and consolidate transportation, leading to the opening of branches in Taiwan, Hong Kong, and Singapore. They also founded Maersk Drilling in 1972, providing vital offshore drilling services to the oil and gas industry. A year later, Maersk Line acquired its first container ship built in Japan, the Svenborg Maersk. As the market changed, market needs also gradually shifted. In 1975, Maersk began containerizing its original routes and continued to optimize itself in the transportation process. At the same time, Maersk gradually opened many other businesses and had its own offices or subsidiaries in many cities around the world. Amidst the success of the Maersk business empire, Maersk McKinney Mula resigned as CEO and daily manager of the company in 1993. In line with the company's business needs, APM Terminals was then established as an independent business unit in 2001. Two years later, the official merger of the company named AP Mula Maersk AS was completed. Then, in 2007, Niels Smedegard Andersen was appointed CEO of Maersk. In 2012, Maersk McKinney Mula's youngest daughter, Anne Maersk McKinney Ugle, replaced her father as chairman of the foundation. As times changed, more types of ships emerged in the market. Additionally, market needs also became diverse. In 2013, the first 400-meter-long ultra-large triple-E container ship was delivered. It was the largest container ship in the world, environmentally friendly and energy efficient. This was also a good development in the history of ships. In 2016, Co was appointed as the new CEO of Maersk, and on September 22nd of the same year, Maersk announced that they would separate the oil and gas-related businesses to focus on the integrated transportation and logistics company specifically. Afterward, Maersk made many acquisitions and developed the transportation and logistics business. However, at the same time, they also sold other businesses or opened other independent companies. For example, in 2019, Maersk Drilling became a separate company on the NASDAQ Copenhagen. In recent years, Maersk has further refined its business. Especially when the COVID-19 pandemic began to spread a few years ago, while many companies started to suffer losses or even go bankrupt, 
Maersk continued to innovate and provide solutions in the face of market uncertainty. Starting from the idea of a father and son from Denmark in the late 19th century, Maersk has now offices in 112 countries and employs more than 88,000 people. Of that number, more than 30,000 people are employed by Maersk Line. The Maersk Line fleet itself includes more than 610 container ships. If combined, these ships have a carrying capacity of 3.1 million 20-foot container units. Each Maersk fleet is monitored in real time around the clock. At any given time, operators have information about the exact location and operating details of 270,000 refrigerated containers. In addition to its shipping division, the Maersk Group also includes Maersk Oil, Maersk Drilling, APM Shipping Services, and APM Terminals. However, among all the businesses, container shipping is Maersk's largest activity, contributing half of its revenue. Currently, Maersk conducts logistics and forwarding activities under several brands, such as Maersk Line, Damco, and Saf Marine. Maersk Line is the largest unit operating within Maersk in terms of revenue and employees. The company has more than 550 vessels with a capacity of 2.2 million TEUs. Then there's the Damco brand, previously known as Maersk Logistics and Damco. Damco itself is involved in supply chain management and solutions for forwarding worldwide. Meanwhile, SAF Marine is an independent shipping company based in Africa with more than 40 container ships and 40 multi-purpose ships. Thanks to its success, Maersk received the Best Shipping Company Award given by Trade Financial Global in 2019. Its development over the years has made Maersk the top choice for many importers and exporters. From 1904 to the present, Maersk has a long history spanning more than a hundred years. The company has gone through several generations of management and development and today it is a very strong industry giant. Each generation has worked hard in this shipping company. Moreover, the company offers solutions for large and small businesses, regardless of the industry or goods being transported. Maersk also actively handles the shipping process from start to finish, including arranging the entire shipping route. In addition to operating in sea transportation and container shipping, Maersk also operates in air and road transportation. This ensures fast delivery of goods and excellent product control until they reach the client's hands. For over 100 years, it has gone through the process of expanding its business into a large multi-sector company, then transforming its business to focus on transportation and logistics and finally separating other businesses. In this long history, Maersk has evolved from a used steamship into an international transportation and logistics giant.